What's going on guys? My name is Joe Graves and this is So You Wanna Be A Rockstar. I'm joined today by my two co-hosts, my dear brother, Sam Graves, and our one and only friend, Mike Kingswood. On this show, we talk about all things music related, from music production, touring, having a laugh with the guys on the road, and it's just a general insight into the music industry. And if any of that sounds sensational in your lug holes, please like, share, subscribe, but most importantly, enjoy the show. Hello. 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 Did you guys hear two more harmonies? <laughs> no. What the hell? That was fucking weird. I <laughs> have never seen anything like that. Not even on Most Haunted. That must be up there with the most that was... unparalleled proof of the supernatural. That was very spooky. <laughs> that was spooky, wasn't it? I'm worried fucking up. I'm worried. Anyway, guys, what are we talking about today? Uh, we've had quite a few topics pop up, haven't we? But um, one that I think we should cover is, it was like the hierarchy of, of touring. I know we covered uh, a few like touring tips and stuff, but let's get like specific with it. Let's yeah. go. Let's that go, was like, an overview, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like, yeah, let's, get, let's get into it. Yeah, now. okay, so, let's like, get into it. So like, I'm talking like a local band on it, like maybe a touring package that's coming through and maybe you've got on a show or something like that or like a, a support band on a bigger tour or something like that. Let's just kind of hmm. go into like tips of what to do and what not to do. And it's like etiquette, isn't it? Yeah, etiquette, basically. There etiquette. we go, touring mm. etiquette. Lower so level or we've all level. done this, haven't we? Bottom level, first kind of few shows we're doing and you, you get on support, you know, with a pretty big band, even one of the bigger local bands. And you are shocked to the core. You are humbled instantly, aren't you? With like, you know, you go in there, you start setting your amp up, and it's like, get out of there, kid. I oh, know, yeah. Be uh, expect to. Um, they're they're not going to move the drum kit. <laughs> you set up either to the side. Sometimes not even on the stage. <laughs> yeah, that is actually true. I've That's literally true. played That's gigs where I've been happened. on the side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So where, where do you begin? What do you do? Let's say you are a local band, and pretty big bands come through town, and you were lucky enough to open that show. You get there first, yeah, okay, because you're local. Here's my, here's my two tips that we, we can just elaborate on these. My two tips are be on time and get the fuck out the way. So let's delve into that. Be on time for loading. Yeah, be on time on your stage time. Be yeah, on you're, time. Working a, you're totally working around the main band. Yes, absolutely. Be like you're not there, like you don't affect. You should like do your show and it doesn't affect anything about the headline show. Do you know what I mean? So be on time and get the fuck out the way. Like, be on time for when you finish your set. Do not do not run over. Right, let me mean? just clarify. Don't get the fuck out of the way as in leave before the headline battle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a famous no-no, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. They <laughs> definitely got in trouble for that one before. Oh, yeah. Oh. We certainly did well. I, I don't even know that, if it dude. was we. I'm I think so that was right. a... I know that you're meant to stick around, but if the shit, I'm not watching, dude. <laughs> <I'm> such... <laughs> yeah, wait till they call if you out. Good. Sorry, let me clarify in further. If the good. <laughs> <laughs> wait till they call you out on stage and then you get told about it the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't happen... Evile. It happened it was to evil. me. I can't remember when we were in our first or second band. Or was it our band? I, or I were we in different remember. bands? I might not even been in. in, in I can't in, remember the reason because it was about maybe <laughs> eighty-four years ago. <laughs> oh, we'll do an it. Was a long, Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Titanic it was a Titanic. It was a long right time now. ago, but yeah, for, I know I had a valid reason to leave <laughs> because I remember after being called out and being told about it, I got in contact with them. I was like, honestly, guys, I had to leave for a very serious reason, and. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> the reason is, oh, so there was less people in the room, so we've got to blame someone. Yeah. All right, so I, I, if I don't want to watch this, I'm not watching. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. If you never said you were polite in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah. keep in mind, you will you've, not go very far. <laughs> you've made the assumption. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a polite guy. <laughs> no, you are a polite guy. I know, yeah, I really am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, where were we? So get out of the way. Get out of the way. Stuff like, um, like when you finish your set, like um, this is how specific I want to get. Like drummers, if it's your stands, don't start taking your cymbals off the fucking stands on stage. Get your stands off the stage. It's like a rush. Changeover is like a rush. You've got 15, 20 minutes. Don't be like, oh, I'll go to the dress room and and take my shirt off and whatever. Nah, get off the stage. <laughs> Clear immediately. Like the quickest you've ever been. You like, have to be. You have on. to really be a team at this point. Yeah, yeah. You? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's you know, there's many reasons why I didn't pick the drums as you know <laughs> as a instrument to pursue and go on tour with and this and that because you know nobody in the band wants to help do they no, <laughs> no way i certainly don't but in those 
five minutes you've got to clear the stage yeah. you have to be a team and help your drummer get the stuff off yeah it, it becomes regimented like like the longer you do it it's like right okay I'm, i know exactly what i'm doing like to get it on the pedal board get it off i'll be off in like four minutes you know what i mean like get yeah. off the stage get yeah, yeah, yeah. the fuck out the way did you ever find you would tweak your rig throughout the years to accommodate yeah that, that concept absolutely yeah i certainly did i yeah. remember dropping down to a combo at one point yeah that's I what mean, i do now yeah mm -hmm. the whole world's now on like axe effects and all that so it's yeah. Well, effectively, mm -hmm. just a yeah, especially when there's one you know. rack that they could just roll off, so that's yeah, it helps yeah, yeah. a lot. But yeah, it's very when important. you got to the whole stage banners and this and the other, it didn't matter what amp you had, yeah, the smaller the better, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But you're yeah. only cranking it to five anyway in the venues you normally play, so even yeah, stuff like uh, here's another get up to get the fuck out of the way one, uh, maybe the headline band sound checking. Don't start setting up your drum kit and your cymbals and stuff in front of the subs. All right, yeah, get the fuck out of the way. Sound checking, dude. It's going to rig them. Do it. Look around and go, oh, that looks like a good place. That's out the way. There we go. Flow. Be like you're not there. You're a ghost. <laughs> That's right. You know, even things like you would get to the local show, because this is how it was. You would do the first bunch of kind of bigger shows supporting a local band before you'd really head off on tour. Mm. If, well, that's what we did anyway. I assume it's the deal with most people. Get a good, I don't know, five to ten gigs where you play in a mostly packed out room, supporting someone bigger. And then you, you, you do get used to things like you maybe, I don't know, you've done your own headline shows there or whatever, and all, all the local bands are sharing a dressing room or two, three. Yeah. When a big band comes through, it's not for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's something to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Again, get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, this is like, even, even like if you're on d decently big tours as well, do you know what I mean? Like, get out of the way. It's got to be like, it's about them. It's their tour. Everything like, uh, if it is a communal dressing room kind of thing and they're warming up, get out. Get out. So the singer can do his vocal. Do you know what I mean? Don't just sit there like, on your like, switch or something. They're really loud. Just like drinking all the beers and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Just <laughs> get out of the way. Leave them to it. Like, yeah. Okay, maybe when they're on, I'll go in there then. Do you know what I mean? That's it. Like the rider's not for you. Yeah. Which is a hard, hard thing to realise, I guess if no one's ever told you. But it's like, <laughs> These guys probably don't have any money to yeah. to eat. So if there's a loaf of bread there and some Morrison's fucking, fucking sliced chicken, chicken, you know, it's not for you, man. You and uh, I put this online before actually. It was a. Uh, this is more for like local bands, like that. Maybe like the promoter's your friend, or you've won a competition or something. You got on like a, a decent touring package. Don't touch the fucking rider, dude. It's not for you. Like it's for the touring package. Like what they've done is they're traveling. Hundreds of miles, thousands of miles every day to play the show. Probably haven't showered, but have enough money to like even get meals or or sleep properly. You're probably sleeping in a van. Do you know what I mean? Like that's for them. You've probably been at home. You've had a shower, had a nice cooked meal. Your mum's dropped you off. Do you know what I mean? She, oh, pick you up at eleven. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't touch the fucking rider, dude. It's not for you. You mean pick up the gear at eleven and then you can go party? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my god, we used to do that, didn't we? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Thank you, mum. Yeah, mum, thank you. Thank you. I know Don't you're watching. <laughs> You'll be the first viewer. Do you know what's amazing, actually? Because we've put three episodes out so far, and I've had quite a few people come up to me like, I'm really enjoying this. This is fun. This is cool. Sometimes even insightful, which is amazing. You know, it's a shame because we're not enjoying it. I know. Well, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's weird because a lot of people don't know, like, know this stuff. I mean, yeah. They just go to a show and be like, oh, yeah, nice. But they understand what happens like behind the scenes, I guess. So. Well, that, no, that's good. But I was thinking, one, either, either we're actually doing something good with our lives, finally, uh, or our friends are full of shit. <laughs> yeah. Either way, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I always said from the beginning, we have these conversations over and over anyway. Might as well just fucking film them once yeah, and then <laughs> move on with our lives, you know. And if you want to hear it again, just watch it. <laughs> well, you know I mean? well, well, let me just tell you something that I did once. We were on a tour, me and Joe. And, um, you know, it had been a great, great year. Our best year, the one that popped up out of nowhere, 2012 for us. 2012. Yeah, and then we did some really massive rooms and then some more massive rooms and some slightly smaller but still massive rooms. And then we were on a tour and then we got to... Where was it? Southampton. The Joiners. Oh, baby. Yeah. Joiners. It's a legend. <laughs> a legend. That's a good, uh, that's like a good shit venue, the Joiners. That is a good I mean? shit venue. Yeah. It's it's not great, but it's a good shit venue. It's got a, it's got a stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. really high one for the room. Really <laughs> fucking high stage. Yeah, if you're in the front row, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're looking so over the door. But, but there's dressing rooms. I think there's a shower there. Do you know what I mean? There is parking down a very narrow lane if yeah, you can yeah, get yeah. there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's a good shit venue, Joiners. Yeah. Shout out to Joiners, actually. Yeah. Good one. So anyway, I'll make it short. We got there and like, you know, we'd had played some great rooms that year. And all of a sudden, I'm disappointed. Mm. 
at this tiny little bit. First, we're first band on probably. <laughs> first or maybe second. Yeah. And I'm disappointed. And I remember getting basically told off by someone in one of the other bands being like, you do your time. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, just because you've done some cool tours, there'll be a lot more of this. Yeah. What, you got told off? What, were you not, like actually popping not off? Not told off. I wasn't popping off. <laughs> I was just... It sounds like you're I was, popping off. You know, I, I believe just, you're popping off. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm, not saying you, I'm not saying you get an ego. Like, I didn't get an ego. But, you know, we'd just been doing, like, you know, anything that's like 3,000 cap room mm. support tours. And then, you know, like you said, join us is a good shit venue. Yeah, but it's what? 250. Is it? I seem to remember it being a 150 Fucking cap hell. venue, yeah. It's a small... And all of a sudden, show. I'm, like, a little bit disappointed. I wasn't really whinging. I was just like, oh, it's tiny, isn't it? And I was probably actually more or less thinking, we're going to have to stick two drum kits on this tiny stage. Mm. So that that is a room where a drummer gets stuck right in the corner of the stage. I, do you have to... I think you have to walk through the fucking crowd. You have to walk through the crowd yeah, to get onto the stage, shit. yeah. That is a bit shit. Because you can't pretend that... Your techs have set up your stuff, and you know, <laughs> oh. no, no, you go on, you you go on, you go on with a hood up, and yeah. no one has any idea who you are. Uh, it's me all along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, the crowd. Oh my god, it was him all this time, the whole time, the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> What's that off? It's 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 fire. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> anyway, that's my story. Yeah, right. Well, oh, actually, really... I did a similar thing. It was on the, yeah. one of the Papa Roach stores, right. and there were like four and a half, five, six thousand, and then it got, it got to like a fifteen hundred. And I looked at the uh, day sheet, and I went, "Oh, small one today." Small then I went, one's... "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> Gotta check yourself sometimes, haven't remember you? Remember playing the cock in butt? Yeah, the cock in butt. <laughs> Look where you are now, all <laughs> right? those dudes playing snooker. Stay humble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that dog, stay humble. That dog chasing his fucking tail. <laughs> Be humble. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, lesson learned quickly anyway. Yeah. I remember a similar thing. It, um, it's the only time I remember thinking that, being disappointed. And it was our first big tour we did. It was the Askin tour. And it was Norwich. Waterfront? Waterfront. Great Waterfront. Venue. Waterfront. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. And same deal, because it was all Academy Ones until yeah. we got there, and I was like, ah. It's, it's on the circuit, though, isn't it, when you do like a bigger tour, because yeah. it's, it's a market that, I mean, it is well east, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like the best in that area. There is another yeah. one called the Arts Centre, actually. That one's all right. That's, that's all right? a pretty decent one. one. Yeah, I played that one. But Waterfront, and again, good No, I mean, don't venue. get me wrong. That was... The most full I think I've ever seen a venue. Yeah. They must have ever sold it. I don't know what the deal was. There's was. like separate dressing rooms in that one. It's like a corridor. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah, a really good venue. Yeah, this yeah. is fine. Yeah, I really like that venue. Good yeah. But yeah, we also did tours later where that was the biggest one yeah. on, on, the, on, the, on the tour. And like, no, no one there. You know? <laughs> no, no one, but like not the same, you know. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, ah. So basically you can't win. Stop being a spoiled little bitch. I remember, yeah, no, yeah. I remember playing at that venue and... Um, Joe Lanky did a did a flip with his bass and he smashed the head off my guitar. Do you remember? I do remember that. What I remember more is your fucking tantrum after. <laughs> I mean, well, guitars are, rightfully so. Guitars yeah. are expensive. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I do think they were freebies. But, yes, but still, maybe our first freebies, and it was my absolute joy. Yeah, yeah. No, That's I remember, all right. I remember you, did, you did pop off, didn't you? Like, watch what you. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Did he smash the head, the head of it? The head came off the guitar. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think. I think. I think that's a pretty valid reason. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I smashed the, the head off well, the guitar once. I remember, my my I, very first Gibson Les Paul, yes, do you remember oh, that? I just yeah. went against the wall at band practice. I was like 17, 16, oh, 17. Yeah. I was young, and it was like the first mint guitar I ever had. And I was like, you know, obsessed with Zach Wilde and all that growing up. I was like, I finally got a Gibson Les Paul. What the fuck? Like within a year, just lent it carelessly against the wall. Don't know why. Thought it was better than that. Was not. Yeah, just I just remember. I think I just heard a big bang, and I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" Went and picked it up. All's well. And it was Jake who was in in our band at the time. Oh, which by the way, someone called us out. We didn't ever mention our band name on the on the oh, previous yeah, week. Right. With one last breath, we were called with one last breath. So now you <laughs> can check us out. Yeah, yeah. I just put the logo on. Them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just arrogantly assuming everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was never meant to be the name forever, was it? I don't it know. was a song title, and we got our first gig, and we didn't have a band name. Yeah, so just look through all Glamour and Kill's lyrics. <laughs> That's not actually true, by the way. No matter what I say, you're never going to believe that. But I swear <laughs> down, I remember hearing it later and being like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, did we have a song with that in? <laughs> yeah, you did. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, it was off your very first EP. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't which I don't think I'd listened to even at that point. All oh, right. I mean, I've listened to it lots Yeah, since. whatever, mate. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> There's no way you're going to believe me, but I'm, I swear down. Anyway, yeah, I remember picking up my guitar and Jake being like, Joe, look at your head. And I was like... <laughs> Oh, guitar head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really oh, bad. That was a bad yeah. moment. <laughs> well, so I must have been there. Yeah, you were in. 
oh. unless you're outside doing a fart. <laughs> I mean, that's well, nice. It's kind of it. <laughs> that's what you should be doing, really, in a yeah. little windowless room. You should be leaving the room. Do you know what? We've wildly gone off topic already. But oh, no. before, <laughs> before we get back to it, I just want to bring up um, fart tax. Fart <laughs> oh, tax. that could have been a whole episode. Yeah. It can, and we can go deep into it. Well, let's, yeah, let's just you know let everyone know what it is, and okay. then, then we'll do another episode about yeah, yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> well, it started in a sound audio. It started, yeah, it started in a sound. This is we've coined this. We, we very literally made quite a bit of money off that. Um, so the basic gist is you're recording people all day. It's like five band members, maybe a couple of mates there as well, or crew. Sometimes, or yeah. Sometimes. So there can be like, you know, with yourself, best part of 10 people in a room, and everyone's just there eating shit. I don't know what it is with musicians and eating shit, but mm. they fucking love it. Anyway, mm. just doing dirty well, it's, farts it's because all day. They go on, it's because they go on holiday to the studio. That's right. It's their holiday, isn't it's it? A new, it's a, you know, not a regular occurrence, is it? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're there every day, stuck in the windowless room. Well, that's right, and it's it's a small-ish room, and I mean, no room's really big enough to have 10 dudes farting, but <laughs> anyway, so we got to a point where we're like, I will not have this anymore, I will not work, <laughs> I will not work in this stench. I will not so have So we this introduced anymore. fart tax. We, I remember we started, every time someone would fart, we'd just stop. We'd leave the room. We'd leave the room and walk outside and just hang out, leave the doors open, hang out for like five, ten minutes, and after the first time, bands would be like, uh, are we going to get back to work soon, man? It's like, no, not until your fart has gone. <laughs> and then like they would do stupid things, like just stick their ass near the door and fart and close it. It's oh, like, there's no way that has so gone outside. Bad. Yeah, that's still in your fucking thong right now. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, they'd, they'd, stick the, they'd open the door, stick their like bum cheek, yeah. like one millimetre out the door, <laughs> do the fart, and then close the door quick, like, right, it's out there, now it's locked out. No, I it didn't know that you actually went this far with it. I thought oh, it was just, no, yeah, yeah, it was just a joke between us. us. No, 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 no. We literally had to refine the rules. So if the fart enters our nostril, it counts as a breach of the rule. Therefore, we would go outside. But anyway, we actually started introducing <laughs> fart tax, which was like, okay, you're either losing your studio time, so we're outside not working, waiting for the smell of your ass to go away. Or we were like, you can buy tokens up front. Oh. <laughs> We literally Honest. started selling them. And it, they were quite expensive, weren't they? I remember, I, mean, ma someone... I remember making an extra five quid in one hour once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember Luke That's from Griever. <laughs> Luke from Griever sitting there and be like, how much is it again? It was, like, it was like, ah, it's like three for a five or something. <laughs> like, yeah, come on. <laughs> I remember going, five, fuck it, worth it. Uh, <laughs> Reach it out. Uh, yeah, any, anyone who's been at the studio and has um, been a victim of this outrageous taxation, um, please comment below. I can't remember what we charged, but it was. A, I remember we definitely at the end of like a, an well, EP I mean, or some added as well. well inflation, man, it changed. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. Three for a five, like Jager bombs. <laughs> so obviously it was a long time ago. If Jager bombs were three for a five, oh, it was I was a long time ago. Yeah. I think it's one for a five. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. Weatherspoons think they're fantastic, like three for a tenner or something. No, I oh, well, that's probably. Wrong, oh, is it? Oh, it's I a striker bomb now, isn't it? It's no. a striker bomb. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah. really eager, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, back to not being a cock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not being a, a cock about. on top. Like stuff like um, uh, if you're right, maybe you arrive at a venue early. Don't just park outside. If there are all the bands out there, yeah, don't just park outside in like one of the only street parking places. Uh, maybe wait there until they get there, but as soon as they arrive, fucking move. Get out of the way. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's falls under the get out of the way tip that's, you know a, that's a good one yeah. I, I also know you shouldn't turn up at a venue especially if you are local and be like hey man can i use your cab yeah. that, that was a classic that happened all the time i remember I, I don't know if it was a local band supporting us somewhere but it was a headline tour so it was like quite a small tour and um people were turning up like oh we use your amps and all that and i always remember back when we were you know the, the younger bands doing this but like, can we use your cab and maybe didn't have them or transport wasn't realistic at the time i don't know but It'd be the same, and you think it's a bit of a dick move, isn't it? Mm. Not letting us use their stuff. But then I remember as you started touring and your your gears getting more abused, it, it became actually like, you know what? No, because also, and uh, say if it was an overseas band, it's probably rented. Yeah, that's another thing. And then the rental literally mm -hmm. is under contract under you. Mm. So if it breaks, it's it's your liable. So I do kind of get it. And also, yeah, maybe you've just got a mess of booby, uh, mess of booby, a mess of booby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to play <laughs> the one of them. Sexiest them there ever was. <laughs> <laughs> a mess of boogie triple wreck, and it's cost you best part of three grand. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sorry, little boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I do remember someone bring your life spider. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I do remember someone actually just used mine anyway without asking me once. Nice. I, do, I don't know. I kind of assumed like, well, if I want to ask. I'm not just going to use it. But he was using my head and everything. I was like, motherfucker. Mm. Like, I think he changed settings. Oh, oh yeah. Come on, fucking if asshole. If, if you're going to be that cheeky. I know, <laughs> I know. Fucking change the settings. But yeah, I, I, even, best part, he spilled a beer on it. Nice. Yeah. It's the one that you were using after, so it did survive. Right. You know, it's that like, like, Ironheart, I think. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so 
good amps. That yeah, very good amps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good. But um, yeah, just cheeky motherfucker. Mm. But, but yeah, it does yeah, make you sense. Still, you still got mine, don't you? Yeah, mate. Oh, floating around know. in circulation somewhere. I know. Yeah, it's <laughs> I know. When way. we when we when we cleared this room out, well, well, a few months ago now, and I said to Al, I was like, "Dude, have you seen my amped?" Because like. I'm, <laughs> I was just I'm not like, saying you have it, but does anyone know where it is? All I'm saying Turns is out you've got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it works, mate. I'm sorry. It's fine. It probably doesn't. Yeah. It's been there a long time. Like, like the amp that I took when we played the Krang Awards. Um, uh, yeah, 2012 again. Oh, that was, well, one, that was of the, one of the worst shows of my life, one like, of the logistically. Nights build up. It was a great show because it was supporting Skin Dread. Mm. Yashin played it and too. And Feed the Rhino. And Feed the oh, Rhino. Right, 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 and cool. I did what we've just complained about my amp head had blown mm. so i just turned up with a line six spider i borrowed it off lucas i think is that right and i went up to whoever the dude is and feed the rhino and i'm like i've had a real unlucky couple of weeks my amp head is any chance i can you and before i even finish the question he's like nope <laughs> well nice well, to meet you like, well it's been lovely to meet you <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet well, you too, and uh, have a great show. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was a silly move, but you kind of feel like, what I felt like is that... You could have bonded over, like, look, we're both here. This everyone's is, here. You know, it's a special show. We're all touring bands, like, blah, blah, blah. We're all playing Download This. Nope. <laughs> maybe, 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 we're, maybe we're all above that threshold, yeah. and you can help hook me up for 30 minutes. Because that did happen. Do you remember, like, we all got to a certain point where you all do kind of like, like, oh, fuck it, go on then. You know what I mean? Really? Like, we're all just sharing gear and whatnot. Yeah, generally it, speaking, I'm very kind when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. Man, but like, It's like if you know people are on the same wavelength as you, yeah, they'll respect I like, it. Um, we had a, we did a show once and the band turned up and they didn't have guitars. <laughs> Not even guitars. Can we, can we use it? No. <laughs> Who was it? S Club Seven. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Jesus <was> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so it was at Newcastle Academy. I remember, and they didn't play because they didn't have any guitars with them. Jesus, like, that's insane. So, well, right, nice one. That is interesting. Yeah. Pursuing a gig without. Anything. Well, like all a of them, they all agreed, like, guys, you bring your guitars. No, no. <laughs> no, no. No, no. Nor should you. <laughs> wow. I can't remember, mate. I was definitely drunk. But, yeah. I mean, that's why well. we have an in house drum kit at the studio. Because <laughs> you, you can know, call it out. Oh, <laughs> come on, it does the job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a good tip if you're touring. If they say, oh, no, it's all right, we've got an in house kit here, take your own, dude. <laughs> yeah. Take your own drum kit. No, what, 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 I meant, what I meant I meant about the drum kit is that, you know, bands are booking. You know, for a bit of studio time. Yeah, yeah. And like, do you have a drum kit? Oh, well, yeah. What what kit have you got? I don't. Yeah. No, Wait, in so fairness, what? when you're recording here, it's like most people do bring their own kits, particularly since we only really do high-end recordings. We don't really do like local, you know, sort of like come in, do an EP in a day sort of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I know, so yeah. in which case it's, it's well, to be honest, in the modern day, MIDI drums almost entirely all the time. Yeah. But if not, people are probably going to want to bring their own drums because they have a sound they want. Yeah. So... Yeah, not really a thing, is it? But yeah, if you're touring and there's an in-house kit, be careful. <laughs> be very careful. Yes. Yeah. Be very. What else? What else is there then? Because you had two. There was get the fuck out of the way. Oh, yeah, and uh, be on time. Be on time. Yeah, that was just... Um, I remember we were on tour in America, and they literally had a timer on the stage, like oh, the side yeah. stage. And as soon as you went over, just in front of us, just cut off. Yeah. We were at the final song. We're like, oh, there's only like a minute left. And they're just like, don't care. Get off. That's how strict it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just like, okay, all right. Really awkward. Like, uh, just like symbols. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Shit, no, yeah. Yeah. Be on time, dude. We we had a thing like that, didn't we? It was it was the end of the asking tour and they pranked us on the last show. Remember, there's a lot of pranks. We'll go into these. Oh, tour pranks. Tour pranks. Great that, idea. That'll be a good one. Another time. <laughs> You reckon? Oh, go now. I'll but... tell this one. Yeah, because yeah. it was it was they did exactly that to us. They had us believe we'd gone over, and you know it was like, oh shit, everything's gone off, and we we didn't know about that rule or anything. Mm. Like as it turns out, we hadn't gone over, but uh -huh. they'd had us believe that, and then they're all there in front of the stage, like fuck off, like we're like Jesus, all right, yeah, yeah. Load, load dog, load dog, dog, and everyone like all absolutely giving us a world of shit, really, a yeah, world yeah, of fake yeah, shit, yeah. and we're all like. Basically crying. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, like yeah, 2,000 people so there, like, oh, upset, shit. Distraught, worried. <laughs> like, worried we're in trouble. Yeah. We've, yeah, we've lost friends for life. <laughs> nah, I turn back around and there's just a bunch of ices on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we did start stage, we got, like, as far as the stairs, or, like, maybe a bit down, and then they just stopped us and, like, turned around, like, 
And then I think all the guys in Eskimo were there were like, bottles of Smirnoff. Like, yeah. <laughs> if, if anyone that doesn't know, being iced, the game being iced. Yeah. Mm. Elaborate. Oh, so... We basically, yeah. did, we did, basically didn't even, we didn't get it at first. Well, I mean, we did, but we obviously understood it so little that we were doing it wrong. Well, we're getting trying, iced. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're um, trying to ice everyone else and just doing it terrible. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> you get better, right? There's yeah, all sorts yeah. of drinkables. So, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, you, you it, go It's basically, it. you have to, you can't obviously force someone to see it, but you hide a Smirnoff ice because if, it happens all day, so it can't be anything stronger. It has to be just something like, you know, like, oh, right, okay. But it can't be just like, oh, nice one, bottle of vodka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's got to be like something you like a Smirnoff. That's why it's called Smirnoff. It's being iced. And it's like you have to be like, oh, mate, can you, um, he'll be like, oh, can you get me a, like a beer out of the fridge or something like that? But it's like empty and it's just the Smirnoff ice. You've been iced. And it's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Right, okay, do you know what I mean? Creatively like plant Smirnoff ices in places. Yeah. like, oh, dude, can you get the lighter out of my bag? And you do it and it's just a bottle of Smirnoff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so that's, tons of so them. That's what that asking thing was. They're yeah. like, oh, get off. So, so you weren't looking behind them whilst they were going on and putting all the smell of ices on the ramps. But you'd have to so get down on one knee and get yeah, down on one knee. Yeah, you have to get down one and do it there, there and then, yeah. I remember somebody, I can't remember who it was, but I think they were like, they had like a remote control car or a truck. <laughs> <laughs> it was like driving around with an ice in the back. It was like knocking on the back of their ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, we'll, we'll go into this at some point. This has been some fucking good ones over the year. <laughs> Tall pranks. We've had some Tall talkers, pranks. Mate. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, amazing. Yeah. Right, I'll tell you what, let's let's bring this one to a close. So what else is there in terms of etiquette, like being respectful to the touring hierarchy? Yeah, it's if there's, uh, I mean, if there's like not that much space or something like that, do you know what I mean? Like if, the, if there's a communal kind of room, like get out of the way if they're warming up or if, they, if they've just played, get out of the way. They're sweaty. I'm talking about the headliners for that, do you know what I mean? And they will really, they will really respect that. And that is how you get friends with bands and stuff like that because I know countless bands that have, oh yeah, whatever, we're on tour and been dickheads and they're like, well, we're not taking them out again. Do you know what I mean? Simply because of that. Mm-hmm. There was a it's huge like, thing a few years ago, I don't know if you remember, it was all over social media where some sort of local band had trashed the room in a local mm-hmm. venue, thinking like, ah, rock stars would be cool, but it really backfired and yeah. everyone was like, disrespectful. Just well, being, you, you mean, just get banned from the venue, blacklisted yeah, yeah. across the country. Yeah, and... people talk, you know what I mean? Like, venue owners all speak to each other, yeah. they put tours together, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's a just, surprising respect culture Just be that's, it's, that's what this all comes down to. Be respectful and be aware just knowing your place be, yeah just know your place you're not the you're not the fucking star of the show mate maybe one day you will be mm-hmm. and then people will do that for you but if you're even like i'm talking you're doing like academies you're doing big tours get out of the way dude just be respectful and they will eventually maybe invite you in but if they invite you into the dressing room don't just waltz back in again like another time just wait for them like don't even knock if they go oh dude do you want a drink Could go in then that's be respectful just get out of the way Mm-hmm. Do you know what's a funny one? You, you do have to be almost more on the ball with this because moods on tour can be volatile. Yeah. People are not in their comfort zones. People are, you know, missing family. And often, the, you know, we mentioned on a previous episode, there's a lot of tension at home because yeah. people are away. Yeah. So people can be shitty. Yeah. So, you know, if you've, let's say, you've been on tour for a month and, you know, maybe girlfriend or whatever's, um, you know, not happy, you know, like, you know, I thought we'd maybe be moving forward with personal bits this year, but you can't because mm. you're still chasing the dream. Stuff like that. The last thing you want is some young kid who's like over the moon, you know. Obviously, you got to see their side of it. Like, they're really happy to be supporting you doing this tour and all that. Mm-hmm. But if they're coming up and being all like cocky little shits, thinking it's fun, funny, because mm-hmm. it's new to them, they might just get fucking told off, you yeah. know what I mean? That yeah, happens. Just, the summary... <laughs> be on time and get the fuck out of the way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically everything you need to know to yeah, I mean, climb the ladder isn't it yeah, yeah. I mean what we talked about like uh, we talked about this previously but um, getting on tours and, and being invited back is all down to being respectful and stuff like that like um, uh, we the whole Papa Roach thing with how we got tight with them was because we started off like that and they realised that and they were like these guys are awesome they just get it yeah these guys get it do you know what I mean like <laughs> we I remember we had the, uh, been on a bus tour once and a singer of one of the bands came over with a pot noodle and just started <laughs> new, obviously found out the code somehow <laughs> and we're all sat there Psst, came on and started making a pot noodle well like, what, are you, <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> I am sat here in my boxes oh, close man. the door get off be respectful that is not respectful that's not your space yeah. it's not your bus but you know after a couple of weeks it was like alright yeah it's fine it's not fun yeah be respectful because again yeah. what you're saying like things might have happened at home like we used to get it all the time like we, we were on tour for years and uh 
sometimes uh, uh, it happened with Dave, like a fan met Dave at a wrong time and he was like, not right now, dude. I mean, sorry. And then they were like, oh, glamour of the killer, dicks. That's all it takes. Yeah, and you get banded in and it's like, no, hang on, hang on, I didn't do out. And he's like, well, you caught him at a bad time, dude. You know what I mean? Tensions run high. I've heard so many stories about yeah, this. Yeah, did you, did you see that video um, of like a bunch of fans like camped outside Justin Bieber's house and mm. he's like, they're like, please just take a photo of having here, maybe all day or for a week or however long. <laughs> probably a week, a week, week mate. Question. I know, yeah, it's probably a week. And yeah. he's like, no, I'm, I'm trying to come home, respect my privacy. Yeah. Like, you, you need it. Because it is I mean, a I performance, I never isn't it? Needed it but. Well, it's, it's a performance, isn't it? Like when you're in a band. I remember it, um, I mean, luckily it was never that bad for us because we were not that big or anything, so we didn't really have to do it. But generally speaking, if you play in one of those bigger shows and you maybe – same deal, tired, you know, so you're not sleeping well. And you're like, oh, I can't be asked. It, it was like a question, wasn't it? We're going out to meet people tonight. Yeah. And like sometimes it'd be like, I just fucking cannot We used tonight. to try and make the effort as much as we could, but sometimes you're there and you're like... So can you imagine if you were like proper famous? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Can you imagine how hard that would be? Like, I have to do it. Yeah. And people like Justin Bieber occasionally like, I just can't tonight. Look, I'm home. Drop it. Brutal. That must be so hard. Yeah, we, we we all we always did. We were never out on tour mad like you guys. Mm. No, no, no. So we were always capable. To be honest, for me, it was like once I've been sweaty on stage, I was like, if I don't get a shower, that's it. I'm even if we go off stage and outside for twenty minutes, show, I've, be, show I've been <laughs> I've been oily. This is it. I'm going to be sweaty all night. Yeah. I didn't want to stand there at merch like, yeah. for ages, just sweating like. Yeah, it's, 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 it's that, isn't it? It's deeply uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, just the whole thing. Like you say, you're just sweating and all that. It's grim. And it's yeah. not like how you want to meet people. Because it's like, this is not who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's just how it is. Anyway, we'll call I'm it calling that. it there. Yeah, let's call it there. Yeah, let's call it. One. To summarise. To summarise. Be on time. Be on time. And get the fuck out of the way. Get the fuck out of the way. Right, <laughs> then. Hope you, hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll yeah. see you on the next one. See you later. See you later, yo. Bye.